And I want to tell you about a woman named Anastasia. And how many people know about Anastasia from Ringing Cedars of Russia? Okay, at least half of you. Supposedly, this man named Vladimir Megre in Russia, who owned a large boat, uh, you know, this is like a big trading boat, that went up and down one of the big rivers there, the river, uh, uh, not Ab or I, anybody, Volga, not one of the great big rivers that runs up into the north. And he would, he, he was an entrepreneur of some means. And he stopped one day and he heard about these magic ringing cedars that were just like some kind of magic tree. So he wanted to find them. So he got off the boat and he heard that they were back in the bush there somewhere. So he asked, he was looking around trying to find someone that would show him where these were. And he, he, he saw a, a, a woman and asked her, and she had like a big scarf on, he couldn't really see much about her, and she said she could take him there. So they run off through the forest, she's guiding him through the forest and starts taking off her extra clothing, and she's this beautiful blonde woman, okay? And he immediately is like smitten with desire. And uh, being kind of a, you know, being a, uh, and he tries to make a move and he goes unconscious. And anyway, so he comes, and I, this is paraphrasing a little bit, so it's a little, there's a drama in these books. He then, she, he, he says, okay, well, I'm not going to mess with this woman. So she takes him to these ringing cedars, a special grove of these, you know, like magic trees. And they eventually form a relationship, have a child, and he comes back and visits her periodically. She lives in the forest in a forest clearing, like with a cave for the winter, eats wild foods and berries. She talks to the animals. The squirrels bring her food. The wolves guard her. The bears take care of the baby. The eagle, she communicates and is friends with all the life around her. And she's a superhuman being. Uh, and there were nine books written eventually about her. And and she's, it's a science fiction kind of story. I mean, it's, it's fantasy. I mean, I even had a hard time believing some of it. And I have to be one of the most gullible people out there. I believe almost everything. And this was even hard for me to swallow. So I, when I first, people started telling me about this. And I want to show you a couple images here. And so it's called the, and then I will piece this apart a little bit more. Anastasia, uh, ringing cedars, images. And they, she insists that we can all do this. But we've just forgotten how. And we've forgotten how. Exactly. And no one's ever seen her except Vladimir Megre. She's this mysterious, and so is she actually she looks like a, bar this is a rendition that somebody wrote up. And I said, it's kind of like a Barbie doll. And, you know, it reminds me of Caroline, though. I must have, when I, you know, no, I knew you'd hate this, but I can't, I couldn't help it. <laughs> and if you went to Russia and, you know, with the right coaching, <laughs> you have to learn some language. But at any rate, uh, the, 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 if we, let me go back here, let's see, how do I go back? If I go to Ringing Cedars book cover images, we'll get a, we'll get, um, I, don't, I don't think you can see it that good, but they made these great book covers um, uh, for, you know, very fanciful book covers uh, for her books. And, well, actually, I don't know what that is. But eventually, they came out with a new set, which has a black, I don't know where's that. The new set that you buy in the US right here, this is the cover of the set that you can buy in the US nowadays. So the, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of intrigue in this whole thing, you might say. The intrigue being like, is he just a con man? He's an entrepreneur. He gave up his fortune to follow her and eventually got his fortune back uh, through, uh, through her. And he's famous worldwide. And so the, the thing, whether it's true or not, whether this is a con job or not, doesn't matter to me. I don't care. 
because it could easily be a con job. But the thing that impresses me is that what she is saying, I told, I'm, I'm not 100%, but I'm 97% in favor of what she says, or maybe 95%. Um, the sex things? Yeah, the sex is only for, for the purpose of co-creation. Right, conscious creation, conscious conception. Does she say no fun sex? Yes. Oh, okay. See, there's, there's a problem. Uh, that's the three. Okay. But, here's, but here's the part that I really like. She says that everybody should have the right to have a little piece of land. She calls it a hectare. That's two and a half acres. Every family should have a little piece of land that they can grow their own food on, build their own house, and they cannot be taxed on the property or on the sales of the food there from the land. So that they can't be taxed off the land. That everybody, it's a birthright. It's like we all should have a place, and I'm like, yeah, that's my dream too, that everybody should have the right to a little piece of land, those that want, I mean, a lot of people, they don't want a little piece of land where they can grow food, they want to live in a city apartment, that's fine, they have the option at this point. So at any rate, but a lot of people that want a little piece of land don't have the option, it's not available. So she's, so she's basically talking about land reform. Um, and she's making headway. There are 11 million people in the world today that have read her books. That was the last count, of course, I don't know who's counting, but they are, a lot of people are reading these books. She's famous in Russia. This is, of course, it came from Russia. That's where it has the most following. But some of the, um, she says, simp live simply, live close to nature, communicate with nature, homeschool your kids, or at least do it in your own little community, home birthing, conscious conception. She talks about how do we get people, to, young people together to, to um, they, in her books it's like, well, and I run into this in this society, I, I want to meet a, a woman, a man, uh, someone, uh, you know, to live my life with. I'm looking for a partner and I don't like going to bars and there's, you know, there's not much, I don't know where to go to, to meet them. And so she, in her books, one of the things she proposes is that there's special events where people go to meet singles, a swinging singles thing, and you, and, and they, you get a chance to meet people. And she says that when people get married, they can go find their, get their small little piece of land, and then they go around and visit all the neighbors around there and say, boy, I really like that. Your apple tree, I thought, was one of the best apple trees, I've, best apples I've ever eaten. They go to somebody else and say, oh, your goats produce so much milk and they're so well behaved and I really like your goats. And so they go around the neighborhood and on their marriage day, all these people come and they bring new apple trees, baby goats, uh, plants, and they give them the start for their, for their little homestead as part of, the, as part of their marriage uh, ceremony. Um, Oh, Dachau's. Doc, Doc right, and Dachau's are common, isn't that they invented it? They're, they're something way pre, pre anesthesia. But she's, Dachniks are the people that live in the Dachau's, and she's really a strong proponent of the Dachniks. Or, in other words, people that have small little pieces of land. But they have, there's so many of them in Russia now, and many of them have come into places of influence, and there's hundreds of communities starting up like this. And, um, Sepp Holzer works with a lot of them. Sepp Holzer is really big in the Anastasia movement in, in Russia. And they, uh, they have pressured the Russian government to give land to people that want it. And I, I'm, I'm still a little hazy, but I believe that they've actually got that passed into law. Russia has a land base. They can give anybody that wants two and a half acres of decent land because it's, it's there. It isn't like crammed like we are here in Montana. It's really lots of space. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of, there, so it's actually happening. Thousands and tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of people in Russia are trying to adopt the Anastasia lifestyle, live a life of integrity, live close to nature, grow their own food, and they're really into permaculture. And some of them know the word permaculture. Um, and so this, a permaculture and Anastasia movement go hand in hand. We may want to have more sex than they. 
But we, we really, you know, there, I think there's a lot of common ground. And, and SEP, SEP goes there and helps them design their systems. I mean, they really think there was some blonde in the woods? Yeah, there, there's a lot of blondes there. There was? <laughs> <laughs> or is it like a sort of accepted as, um, you know, valuable myth? Uh, Jonathan, I need Jonathan. Where's Jonathan? Um, how do I get to 